Hi folks, Russell Wright from ThemeZoom.com. I'm downstairs at ThemeZoom Secret Labs, and I'm inspired to introduce you to some concepts because we've had a lot of things come up, including uh, some of my students who have misconceptions about siloing. Um, there's also a whole lot of other factors that people are overcomplicating. Part of it is because the big picture has never been made completely clear to them about how complicated Google is really not. And what I'm going to try to do today is demystify uh, Google and the Google algorithms. And I'm going to begin to show you while there is complexities, and a lot of uh, tools and SEOs would have you believe these com that is complex because there is some complexity. When it comes to what you need to do, it's not that it's not that big of a deal. It's not really a huge uh, complex system. And uh, Siloing makes it much easier to take very complex ideas across multiple themes and markets and unify the uh, ranking factors, the conversion factors, and the paper or the, um, the, the research factors as well as the keywords. So really what you're trying to do is find the sweet spot across all of the necessary behaviors and end results that you want, and siloing allows that uh, to happen and makes it much easier. But I'm going to have to demystify some things for you first of all. First of all, the first thing that I want to demystify for you is the idea that Google is somehow this gigantic monster and that you're competing against thousands of people when you're going for a competitive term or even a marginally competitive term. And I'm going to start with something that's maybe not that competitive, but it certainly does have a large back-end database. And some of the sites that build for it are larger sites. And this was given to me by a ThemeZoom student. So as soon as you give me one of your side low sites or your keywords and you Put, put them in a public forum, they are available to me. So I'm going to use this as a demonstration. And in reality, you really don't have that much to lose by having me do this. So I'm going to keep these videos probably around five or ten minutes each. And I have my, my studio partner here who's going to tell me when, you know, we've kind of gone over the limit. So we'll try to keep it around uh, probably eight minutes, somewhere in there. The first thing, you're going to take the keyword. The keyword is going to be offshore bank. I'm going to use this because this is an actual case study that was used, um, and you can call it a theme. It would be a theme or a keyword. I don't really care. Depends. A theme is just simply means that it's going to be somewhere high up in your infrastructure, and you really value it somewhere on the side of the structure. The main thing that we're going to look at today is how do we know how difficult this market actually is. I'm going to introduce some concepts that you've never heard anywhere before, except maybe from me about a year ago where I released some of these ideas. It was called Bottom of the Google Barrel. And now I'm going to get more specific with you about how some of the technologies we're creating with ThemeZoom utilize this uh, automatically, thank goodness, as you'll begin to see. And the new tools we have coming out, which actually help you assess very quickly ranking factor across a massive uh, number of sites within a theme. These are all things that, of course, uh, are very expensive to do by hand, and they're really what you're paying the good old-fashioned SEO for. Okay? And also, SEOs have been clamoring for these kinds of tools for some time. So the first thing we're going to look at is what I call the QLI. And this is an important uh, concept to understand. Okay? As you know, my acronyms change, but I'm going to call this the QLI score to begin with. Okay? The QLI score means qualified, less imperfect. Okay, this means Google has qualified the site as a runner up for less imperfect. Now here's something that you may not know. For the keyword, if you type in offshore bank, and if you have another screen, hopefully you have two screens by now. If you, if you don't, then you need to go out and get a second screen. So. When you type in offshore bank, just the broad match, not phrase, you have, a, you have some sites returned, right? Many of you are looking at 10 sites at a time. Um, go ahead and go into your preferences mode. You have the Google box. There's a little thing called preference right here. Just click on it. Go down, and they have all your anti-porn settings and all that. But just go ahead and click on the 1,000, uh, I mean 100 at a time. Okay? We're at four minutes. Okay, we're going to keep them at six. And go ahead and set your return results at 100 at a time, 100 at a time. And I want you to be really friendly to Google because we love Google. We're friends with Google and the staff there and the rest. So don't use your SEO quick. 
um, software. I know a lot of you use SQLquick. It's a great software, but it will turn your computer into a virus. It doesn't use proxies or any of these things, and um, which you shouldn't be doing anyways. But SEOquick will turn your computer into a virus, and you will be shut out of Google for about an hour and a half. So don't do that. I'm just warning you. Um, but so remove, turn off SEO Quake. It's that thing on the bottom of the corner. If you don't have SEO Quake, get it, but only use it at 10 at a time. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and set your things for 100. And what you're going to do now is you're going to once you've set it to 100 for the offshore bank query on Google, you're going to see scroll all the way down to the 100 that have been revealed to you. At the bottom of the page, you're going to see page three. Or right all the way through 10. Okay, I want you to click on 10 at the 100 setting. Okay, on the Google bar. Right. When I come back, I'm going to tell you exactly. Uh, we're going to talk about what it is that you see on number 10. Okay. We'll see you in a second.